everyone, welcome back to Zoo School Live. I am educator Elisa, and today I am a real life dragon. And I have some real life dragon friends for you to meet. Um, we're going to be talking about our desert dragons today. Now, none of my dragons have wings like I do, and none of my dragons can breathe fire. But some of the characteristics that I have, they have as well. I'm gonna have you guys take a look at this wonderful picture over here. We've got a couple of different real life dragons in this picture. So on the top, we have more of our tropical dragons. We have a gecko, we have a Solomon Island skink or a prehensile tailed skink, as well as a green iguana. And all of those guys like it hot and humid and where they live, there's lots of foliage and vegetation and lots of things that are green that they can camouflage with. And then on the bottom, we have our alligator lizard, we have our Gila monster, and we have a desert horned lizard. They're also camouflaging with their environments, but instead of it being really wet and humid, they like it really, really dry and hot. And they're also camouflaging with the sand and the dirt where they live. Now we have a couple of different friends here today. We have Smalls. Smalls is our bearded dragon and she is um, still very young. She is probably not gonna get all that much bigger, um, but she was born in um, August of 2019. So she's still pretty young. Now she's got armor on her body, just like I have my beautiful armored scales. She has beautiful armored scales too. And you can see she's got those spikes around the side of her body. She's got spikes around her head and she's got these really, really rough textured scales that are orange, beige, yellow, brown. And that helps her to blend in or camouflage with her, her environment and she is an animal that is native to Australia. So she's gonna be blending in with that sandy dirt. She's got a long tail, just like I do, my long tail, and she's gonna be using her tail for a specific reason. Both of our types of lizards today have the ability to drop their tails and regrow them. Not all lizards can do that. These guys can. Now. When their tails grow back, do they look nice and beautiful and long as their original tail? No. There are also some other lizards that can drop their tails, but then it doesn't regrow. They will regrow, but it'll be a little bit of a nub. Um, and it, this is a beautiful tail. If I drop mine, it'd look like this, a little nub. She has her long tail to make herself look big and long. And there's a couple of things that she can do to tell you if she's not very happy or if um, maybe she's a little frightened. So bearded dragons are called bearded dragons because they have this beard, not a beard like your dad or your uncle or your older brother might have with the stubble and the hair, but they have the ability to turn their scales under their chin black. It's called black bearding. And if they feel threatened by a predator, they're going to turn into a big circle. They're gonna get really, really flat. They're gonna push those spikes out. They're gonna open their mouths as big as they can. And then they're going to turn their scales black. So if you take a look at this picture, this is an example of a not very happy bearded dragon. They have that wide open mouth, the black beards with the, spike, the spikes puffed out, and you can't really tell, but their stomach is really, really flat. Those are all signs of an agitated bearded dragon. If we turn back over to Smalls, does Smalls look agitated? I don't think so. She looks pretty content to me. She's got her skinny little body. She's not black bearding. Her mouth isn't open. She's not flat like a pancake. She's having a fine old time in her little sandy uh, terrarium here. Smalls here eats a couple of different things. She can get a salad. Maybe some of you guys like salads. I particularly like fruit in my salad. So does Smalls. We've got some lettuce, pepper, 
grapes, I think some pineapple in there, cantaloupe, and we'll see if she would like some of her salad today. She eyed it a little bit. But there's something else that small the bearded dragon likes, and those are bugs. So she is a bug lover. So she's eating meat because we consider bugs a meat product because they're another animal, they're a prey item, and they are high in protein. She's gonna eat crickets and mealworms and uh, termites and ants and any other bugs that they're gonna find in Australia. There's a lot of bugs in Australia. So we're gonna see maybe if she'd like some crickets on top of her salad. I hope you guys at home don't put crickets on top of your salads. You might want to turn her. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she needs a little coaxing. To oh, that oh, they all climbed off. No. You have to actually be a real dragon and catch them, Smalls. Good job, Smalls. What a good dragon. She just needs a little help. I'm sorry, did I offend you? It looked like she was trying to act like a gecko there. <laughs> Do you need a little help again? Oh, which one? Oh my god, so many choices. <laughs> now Smalls is a little slow right now. She was actually taking a nap earlier. These guys need an outside source of heat for them to have enough energy to move around. These guys are reptiles, they're ectotherms. That means that they need an outside source of heat in order to get warm themselves. So in order to have enough energy to be able to try and get their food, these guys need to go out in the sunshine. There you go, Small. She says, I don't want that salad. I want these yummy crickets. Do you want that last one? <laughs> okay, you can eye that. We're gonna go meet some of our other dragon friends. Some of our other dragon friends are called our Chuckwallas or Chuckwalla lizards. Now, these guys are also a desert dwelling type of lizard. However, these guys are not native to Australia like Smalls, our bearded dragon. These guys are actually native to the United States where we live. And these guys live out by Arizona and California where it's really, really hot, really, really dry, lots of sand and dirt and rocks. These guys have something that's called sexual dimorphism. So basically what that means is that the males look different from the females. And usually that's indicated via their size difference as well as their coloration. So here is Mojave. You can see he's bigger and darker in color. Here is Sonora and she is smaller and lighter in color. These guys will possibly occasionally eat some bugs, but they like their salads much, much more. They're more herbivorous than omnivorous. So we have a salad for these guys too, and Sonora is a very good eater. So we'll see if she would like some salad. They get the same type of salad as Smalls. They're gonna be getting fruits and veggies and lettuce, and then they get a supplement put on their salads that makes them nice and strong, has all of the minerals and nutrients that they need to stay nice and healthy. 
So like I said before, these guys are able to drop their tails and regrow them as well. Same thing as Smalls, our bearded dragon. Um, and it'll grow back, but it won't grow back nearly as pretty. Another really cool adaptation that these guys have, if you look around their nostrils, they might be actually clean right now, but they are a little bit white and, and crusty and dirty. That's because these guys expel extra salt from their bodies via their nostrils. So they basically sneeze out salt. And when we go to put them back home in their enclosure, um, their glass is covered in this white stuff. And that's from all the salt that they're getting rid of through their noses. And that actually helps them to stay hydrated. So remember in the desert, compared to maybe a tropical rainforest where it rains almost every day and there's lots of big leaves that can fold and store water, there's not as much green vegetation and foliage in the deserts. So these guys need to have special adaptations for them to be able to either hold water in their bodies or get rid of the salt from their bodies. So these guys will drink out of little teeny, teeny, tiny puddles. They don't need a lot of water and they get a lot of the water from what they eat. So if they're eating pieces of cactus in the wild that are really, really high in water, they'll be able to stay nice and hydrated. Now, Mojave and Sonora, now well, maybe it's Mojave who's hungry, sticking his tongue out too. Do you like something to eat there, sir? Here's These guys are a couple. They love spending time with each other. They take naps together. Mojave usually will let Sonora eat from the salad before he takes food um, himself. And Mojave was able to get Sonora as a girlfriend because he was the boy who did the most number of push-ups in the best form. So males will go on their front feet and they'll kind of go like this and they'll do push-ups. And they do that to impress the lady friends. And he did the best push-ups and the most number of push-ups and that's how he won Sonora's heart. However, they'll also do a similar thing to bearded dragons where they'll make themselves look like a giant pancake. They get really, really wide and flat to make themselves look bigger. And if they do that, that means they're in defensive mode. Same thing as bearded dragons where they wanna make themselves look bigger. These guys will also do something called a wave. Bearded dragons and chakwalas have been known to do this and it looks like this. It's very cute, but they're doing it for a very specific reason. Um, sometimes they're doing it to show other males that this is their female. Sometimes they're telling other males that this is their territory. And then sometimes with bearded dragons, what they'll do is it's kind of the submissive um, behavior. So where dogs will lay on their back and show you their belly, that's a vulnerable state for them to be in. And they want belly scratches, that means they feel safe around you. That's kind of similar um, with what bearded dragons will do. They'll wave to kind of be like, I'm okay with you. Yeah, that's all right. So it's a pretty cool behavior to see. These guys feel very, very similar with their scales like I have here. Um, it does not feel like cardboard. It's very, very rough. So we have hognose snakes, for example, these chuckwallas that have these really, really rough textured scales. Compared to those other lizards that we maybe saw in the beginning, our tropical lizards, like our skink here, they have really, really smooth scales that are not slimy, but really smooth. So think of your fingernails. If you were to touch your fingernails, that's what these guys would feel like. Whereas our chuckwallas and our bearded dragons, they're going to be much more rough and rugged and maybe bumpy and sandy. Now, um, none of our dragons here, again, like I said, have wings. That's going to be staying with our uh, insects, like our butterflies um, or our bats or our birds. Um, but these guys do have scales. And just like I was wearing my claws before, they also have claws. Now, I don't know if Holly can get a little bit close up to the Chuckwalla's nails or to um, Smalls' nails. We can try our best. They've got really, really long toes, but their nails aren't very long themselves and they're definitely not sharp. If when you look at lizard scales and nails, you can usually tell 
if they are arboreal, meaning they live in trees, or terrestrial, that they spend most of their time on land. If they are brown in coloration, brown, gray, yellow, black, they're most likely going to be terrestrial or ground-dwelling lizards. If they have dull, short nails like the chuckwallas do, that's another indication that they're most likely going to be spending time on the ground. Smalls, the bearded dragon, has the same thing. Not very sharp nails, and Smalls is this yellowish, brownish, beigeish color. All things to help them to camouflage with their surroundings on the ground. Whereas those tropical lizards that I showed you earlier are almost always green. And that's to help them to camouflage and blend in with leaves. Almost all arboreal lizards also have very, very sharp nails like this. More so like this than what the chuckwallas and smalls have. And that's to help to grip onto tree bark so that they don't fall off of trees. All right, guys, so if you have any questions about our chuckwallas or smalls our bearded dragon, please put them in the comments and I'd be more than happy to answer them to the best of my ability. So I'm gonna see if Holly can look at our comments and see if we have any questions while we look at our lizards. that last cricket did you get that last cricket? she sure did get that last cricket she sure did and comments about her being beautiful which oh, i definitely smalls, you are beautiful did you hear that yes <laughs> another cool um adaptation for bearded dragons and a couple of other lizards as well is they have a third eye now it doesn't look like their other two eyes that would be strange but they have what's called a third eye um, or their pineal gland that's right on top of their head in the middle. She really, really likes head scratchies. So um, it feels really good for her. But if I were to take my hand and we were outside on a sunny day, which is not today, and I were to cast a shadow by putting my hand over her head, she might get a little bit irritated or nervous. And the reason is in the wild, things that are casting shadows over bearded dragon's heads is not usually a good thing. That usually means that there is a bird of prey flying overhead that wants to eat these guys for a snack. So these guys detect shadows with that third eye that's on top of their head. It's not like these eyes. They really just kind of detect shadows and if they see something that's covering the sun, they're gonna scurry away really, really fast. Um, and these guys have their limbs built in such a way outwardly along with those really flat stomachs that are low to the ground to help them to scurry on sand and rocks. So both bearded dragons and chuckwallas can be very, very fast. Um, as you can see, our chuckwallas and bearded dragon are not fast at all, but that's because they don't have any predators that they need to be running away from, right? They're safe here at the zoo and they are given all of the food that they need to stay nice and healthy. Um, Allison loved when Smalls was eating the bugs. <gasps> Allison loved when Smalls was eating the crickets. That's awesome. Thank you, Allison. They have really teeny, teeny, tiny razor sharp teeth to help them to uh, rip apart bigger pieces of lettuce, but most importantly, to crush the exoskeleton of those bugs that she likes to eat. And Mary Ann wants to know if they're good pets. Mary Ann would like to know if our lizard friends here are good pets. Um, I always say this, no matter what pet, uh, what animal that we show that could potentially be kept as a pet, you always want to do your research first and foremost. The thing with reptiles is they don't usually need as much attention as let's say a cat or a dog or a bird, which needs lots of attention usually. Um, that being said, their setup, their environments, their terrariums is, are really, really, really important and those can get pretty expensive. Um, their caging, depending on what type of lizard you have, the bigger the lizard gets, the much more expensive um, enclosure you're going to need to purchase. And the lighting is vital for them to be healthy. Um, all of our reptiles have different types of bulbs, different types of UV, um, strength, levels, numbers, and some of them humidity. 
Uh, so you have to take all of that into account and you have to replace them uh, fairly often. So that can be pretty costly as well. So where you're kind of making up for uh, not needing to give them as much attention as maybe a cat or a dog, you definitely uh, need to pay attention to the heating to keep them nice and healthy. Uh, they don't make a lot of noise, so that's great. And their cleanup is pretty darn easy. So those are two benefits uh, for having these guys as the pets. And these guys are fairly common uh, pets to, to be had, especially in the reptile world. I don't know of many people that have Chuck Wallas as pets. Um, I don't know it, even if that's allowed, to be honest. These guys are um, a native species to the United States. We don't wanna be taking animals out of the wild and keeping them as pets. Um, so I don't know particularly of any individuals that have Chuck Wallas as pets. All right, guys. I think that was the last question that we had for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed meeting our real life dragons, um, including myself. And hopefully you will tune in next week on Tuesday for our next episode of Zoo School Live. Thanks for tuning in with me today. Have a great rest of your day and stay dry.